Hey, Enrique. Hello. How are you? Uh, Good. How are you? I don't know if I'm joining me here in a little bit. She's just finishing up an email, but um, appreciate you taking the time to <laughs> have this consult today. Of course. Um, is she going to be like joining in on Zoom or joining like? Yeah, she's, you know, she's, we live together. She's just in the other room right now. So she'll be over in like two seconds or a little bit once she's done with an email. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so just before we get started, I just want to let you know that we do record our consultations. It's on the form and everything. Yep. So just a heads up on that. And then um, go ahead and just fill me in on Badger, um, you know, what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish with him. And then I'll be taking notes as you go along. And then we will go from there. Yeah, so I'd say the behavior for Badger that we are most concerned about or with trying to Thanks, this is my girlfriend, Naomi. Hi, sorry, I'm late. No worries. I'll just give him a snap from the Badger. You can obviously see Badger here too. <laughs> um, he, most of the issues we're trying to resolve with Badger regards, or is regarding his on-leash behavior. Um, it appears that he is very anxious and impatient about when we're trying to go places when he is on leash and he feels like he can't get somewhere as quick as he wants to go. So a couple of examples are if we're taking an elevator down in our building, he's usually okay sitting in the elevator, but the closer it gets to the ground floor, he can tell and he starts jumping up and trying to get the door and he goes and almost to a hysterical fit where he's yelping and barking and um, just goes in, so it's almost a temper tantrum because the elevator door isn't opening as quick as possible. Um, we've noticed this behavior also happens when we are anywhere near Lake Michigan because he loves to swim. He just throws a, a temper tantrum because he wants to get in the water and it's gotten progressively worse to now if we even go to the intersection we used to cross to go over the park. Um, if we are stopped at a red light there, he will just be through parking and going crazy at the light until we start moving again. Um, other minor issues is if he does have somewhat leash aggression, but only with like two specific dogs in our building that are both golden retrievers for whatever reason. We don't know what triggers that response in him, but he, can be completely fine with, it feels like 95% of dogs, but we know specifically which two but, dogs. But they're also, some, on random occasions, he'll also attack other random dogs too. So it's it's more often than not the retrievers, but like recently it was like a white German shepherd looking puppy for no reason. Yep. And long story, suffice to say, all of this is very specific to leash behavior. For example, as soon as we get to the park and let him off leash to run around, he is very, very comfortable. He is very obedient and listens to us and doesn't run away. And so it seems like all the behavior just stems from when he's on leash. So I guess we hope to get out of this, find out ways to obviously have him stop throwing temper tantrums and he can't get what he wants. Is and, and how do we really with because we've been trying, we've tried the the treats, we've tried the being stern, we've tried the ignoring it and hoping it'll stop, and none of, nothing seems to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, I guess anxiety specifically with, especially when he sees my parents or he sees that people really, really like walk away from them, um, or if we have luggage and we're exiting our apartment he like tries to get out, and out so it sounds like a little bit of separation anxiety but he doesn't do that when he just leaves the apartment for ordinary trips it's really triggered by specific people leaving or walking away from him um or when he can tell that we have our luggage packed and we're going somewhere okay sounds good um oh, and there's just one elevator in our building that he refuses to go into like it's almost haunted. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? Okay. <laughs> no clue what to for that, but we have not. He just immediately starts throwing a temper tantrum and will pull the leash, trying to prevent himself from going in there. So. Got it. And then, so, do you, do you eventually want him to go through that elevator? Is that would that make your life easier, or you're just you don't care, or? 
Um, definitely would make it easier. We do have six elevators in our building, so that if it doesn't happen, it's not the, the biggest deal, but yeah, if we could do that, that'd be wonderful. Okay, man. And just like getting the patient, because even if he's not throwing a fit in the elevator, he has to be the first one out. Yeah. And just more and more of the same, we'll feel like he can't get somewhere as quick as he wants to go. Got it. Okay. And then um, how old is Badger? He just turned two. And how much does he weigh? About? About 75 to 80 pounds. Cool. And then he's on that, he's on the prong collar, right? <clears throat> yeah, we have on a prong collar. And when he is off leash, we do have an e-collar that we use. Uh, what kind of e-collar do you guys have? Um, I believe it's a micro dot um, LED. Um, I forget. Uh, okay. It's in the basket. In the yeah, I'll go push out on camera quick. And then he only uses the e-collar for like recall if he's out and about? Yes. Yeah, especially in the park where there are cars and stuff. <clears throat> so he's going to so just so good. Um, I grew, just one of these. I, the brand is yeah, it just says a micro dot LED brand. It's uh, my family had a lab up in Wisconsin, and that's the brand that they use. So that was just kind of the one that we started with, but obviously open to other recommendations. DT. Oh yeah, it's DT. Okay, and then how many levels does that? Um, system have go up to 15. 15. And, and it does have a vibrate function, which you use most often. Okay, use the vibrate function. Yeah. I mean, if he is really like being bad, or I've used the, the zap if he's ever gotten a scrap over a ball at the park, which he responds to, but I save that for just like very more serious situations. Got it. Okay. And then what's like the number you have to use for like those situations you find that oh, is yeah, it's pretty high. It's between a 13, sometimes up to 15. But the, the thing is, it's sometimes loose on his neck. So if the, um, oh, get off his vocal cords a little bit, he doesn't feel it if it's on the side of his neck or the back. And when he's running around, sometimes it, it just gets out of place. Got but it. Okay. It's on the neck, um, 12 up to a 15 is pretty good. It, it also has a, I think oh, I to the the door open he's trying to get his treats um it also has either the just the nick function or the continuous thing i only ever just do the one quick jolt okay i see um all right um anything else about badger um no like i said he off leash she's very good knows recall he when he's not anxious, he's actually a pretty decent walker too. Like if there aren't distractions, um, he's pretty, he's okay. It just seems like there are certain triggers that make him almost have like, it seems like an anxiety attack or a temper tantrum or we're just trying to resolve those. And they're, and they've gotten like more, more pronounced in the past seven days. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It seems like. And I think it's a it, part of it. I wonder if it's like that we just aren't responding to it in the best way. And so he thinks, like the first time he did it, I was just kind of like laughing and like, are you serious? And just being, being in the middle of the street in a crosswalk, right? And now every time we get to that crosswalk, he does that. And it's like we, we just can't have him screaming every time he gets to the red light. Exactly. And then earlier you mentioned, um, that he, he had an interaction with a, a white German Shepherd puppy. Did he actually attack it or he was just barking at it? He does the thing where he barks and gets up in their face and then the other dog barks back and they they, they do the... Yeah, they've never actually bit or gotten to like an actual fight. I think it's one, he tends to play growl with us. So it might be a form, he might think that's an acceptable form of playing. But yeah, he's never bitten or like lash on or make contact with another dog, kind of a barking match and okay um so um go ahead and like uh what's the, how do i say uh like run me through what happened like the moment you saw the white german shepherd um how badger got to the white german shepherd and like okay. like like the like go ahead and run me through that that time there so this is more it happens like practically 
specifically when we're coming in and out of our building. And so we live in a high rise building with one hallway um, and six elevators. And there are a lot of dogs in the building. And so if he's coming back tired from the park, incredibly non-reactive, doesn't really care, doesn't even look at other dogs. And you know, you have puppies that jump on him and he's like very non-reactive. If he's on the way out where he's doing that, where we were telling you with the elevator, he's already like amped up and anxious and hovering fast enough and a dog gets near him, he either makes it and you know, shoots straight for the door because he's meaning to get out or he'll do that, that like, don't mess with me thing. I'm busy right now with something else. And he'll bark and like get up in their face. And the other dogs immediately are like, oh, I didn't realize we were upset. And so they'll, you know, they'll bark back. But it, so it'll happen. So that'll happen frequently with kind of any random dog and depending on the circumstance. And then there's this issue of like the golden retrievers and one or two in particular seem to, even if he sees them from far away, he gets, you can tell he's getting anxious and he gets worked up. And if he's close to him, he'll try to, he'll just get tense. And he doesn't, the back of his neck, I forget what this is called. That part ne won't necessarily get, you know, like won't, it, it won't look like he's angry, but if he gets the opportunity to be near them, he'll bark at them and he'll try, it's, a, it's almost, we call it the little man syndrome. Like he's always trying to show that he's tougher if if the dog were to get close to him. But he's also seen these dogs off leash and been completely fine with them. Doesn't, never has fought them or anything. Yeah. Uh, or like gotten a barking match with them off leash. He's very, very, very non-reactive to yeah. other dogs. <clears throat> and a lot of people are building. So it's like questions like, we even joke like, are we gonna have to break the and move out of here? Because all the things that seem to be happening with him are in this godforsaken hallway with the elevators. Got it. Okay. Um, so what I'm getting from Badger, it just sounds like he's just overstimulated and just very frustrated um, mm -hmm. to the point where sometimes if he sees a dog come near him or if there's something else that's um, bothering him, he's going to redirect his frustration on whoever that dog is. So it's not like I wouldn't say it's aggression or anything like that. You don't have an aggressive dog. He's just frustrated and dogs can't, they can't like um, hold on to something for so long. It, it has to go somewhere. So that's why you get the dogs who like bark and bark and bark because they need to let it out or they'll play tug with the leash because dogs are very mouth based animals. So if they're frustrated, they need to like grab a bone or like chew a ball and like they'll start just like chewing on it if they get really excited. Um, or like they'll, they'll tug the leash because they're just like, I need to do something. I need to, re I need to release this frustration and excitement. So I'm going to grab this leash because this is the closest thing to me where I can grab and just like let it all out. Um, <laughs> or it could be a dog around the corner. He sees, he's just going to let it out. It's not like something personal, um, <clears throat> but, um, maybe he's, it's been, um, you know, it could also be something where it's like, he's frustrated and then these two goldens maybe are giving some energy towards him and then he's like well what's going on here right because goldens the moment you said goldens is what i was thinking is like well they're they're also like kind of happy-go-lucky dogs so they probably gave some energy back so like sometimes when i hear clients say my dog hates doodles it's because <laughs> a lot of times doodles are really excited dogs so that makes sense or it could be like the fluffiness or the big the big the bigger ones but um i think he's just like really uh really frustrated dog and um you know the prong collar <clears throat> um seems to like not be enough for badger right um so which is which is also very common it's a very common thing where dogs tend to override the prong collar right because the badger is at a 10 on his excitement level scale and your strongest leash pop or at least tension is a seven then you're never gonna override the brain in that moment and you're gonna just be stuck there. Um, it's very common in like labs and goldens and bully breeds to override the prong collar because they're so happy-go-lucky. They're just like, they don't really understand what's going on. They're still like wiggly guys, right? Um, so that's what I've seen from badgers that the prong collar um, isn't really that effective because he does get excited as well in the facility when he knows he's going to go home um so he'll get jumpy and everything like that and i've corrected him a few times with the prong collar and i've gotten him to settle for a little bit but it's never like like if he's at a 10 or like maybe not he's not at 10 here he's maybe at like a seven he's really excited i can get him calmed down to like a three but he's still like a little excited but he's not like jumping or like biting the leash or anything like that he's just still like 
we're going home, we're going home. He's still excited, but he's not acting out. Um, <clears throat> and all these things you're starting to see is just built up frustration. So um, when it's not addressed, it's just going to get worse. So um, like, you know, these things can start like from puppies, right? Sometimes owners, you know, um, we always tell our owners, you know, don't put a harness on your dog or your puppy because um, over time, um, the puppy can start to get frustrated because whenever the puppy sees another puppy or another dog and they want to go to it, the owner pulls them away. When you pull a puppy away like that, um, it activates uh, what's called opposition reflex. So when you pull back on a dog who has a harness or a flat collar, um, maybe sometimes prong if it's not effective, they want to go against the pressure. So they want to go against when you give, when you pull back, when you pull forward, they want to go backwards, left, they want to go right, right, they want to go left. So over time, as that happens, the puppy's realizing, man, every time I see a dog, I want to go to it, but then I get this negative tension on my chest and I'm pulled away from it. Over time, the puppy's going to get frustrated because he's trying to go say hi to these other people, dogs, whatever it is, but they keep getting pulled away. Mm -hmm. if, if, um, maybe you've seen it in like a movie or real life where these like, like you're at a bar and like these two guys are getting into it and one guy he has his buddies try to hold him back. You see the guy get more amped up, right? When he's trying to be held back. That's what dogs are feeling when they're trying to get, when they're getting pulled away from something they want to go to, they get more frustrated, right? So over time, this frustration builds, 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 and then it turns to reactivity or then it can turn to regression or whatever it is, right? So what you're seeing is just built up frustration that he's having a hard time um, letting it go or just dealing with, hey buddy, just relax right he, he he's he he's just very overstimulated and overly excited uh an overly excited dog right um so <clears throat> food in this scenario wouldn't really work as you said just because food is good for things you want to see right it's it's it doesn't work for for stopping bad behaviors right so if he sits that those are good opportunity for you to give a treat but if he's overly excited and then we're giving him treats, sometimes we can be nurturing that and reinforcing like, yes, be excited, be crazy. Uh, or sometimes dogs are so excited, they won't take food because they're just maybe too stressed or just so, so amped up, right? Yeah, I've never um, a treat before, except in an elevator, I was trying to get him to calm down. I was, I was not be motivated by food. Exactly, yeah. Um, but then, um, what else? Anything, any questions of what I just said right now? That makes sense, I guess. One of the things that we're worried about is obviously the good re positive reinforcement doesn't work to correct, but we're also in a very populated building and we feel sometimes if we're trying to discipline them, we're judged from our fire neighbors for like people all love positive reinforcement. And, just... and he's already yelping when the elevators were open. So there have been times where I'm like, stop, sit, relax, right? Like firm and people are like oh my god you clearly were being the elevator because why else would he be yelping like that and then you're coming up into the hallway and you're doing it and you're like horrified because you're like how did this go from zero to a thousand in the span of seven seconds that you're going down and it, it, what you were saying earlier about like i think since he's a puppy he's lived in this building so he's very familiar with the elevator but every single time it's been like a sit stop relax even though he wants to get out immediately and so I'm, I'm not surprised to hear that he might just be, just have pent up frustration of over time, he's always asked to sit and he's always asked to relax. And what he wants to do is actually just get out. Um, and now it's, you know, he finally like, is kind of like yelling about it, even though he's felt it for this whole time, he's finally like, nope, I'm just gonna, every time I get in the elevator, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> and that's his, you know, um, yeah, I mean, um, well, I'll talk about it later, but um, about, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar. We do the ECOD training, correct? Yeah. Um, the reason why we, we, we like the ECOD is just because of how not confrontational it is, right? In our, in our program or, or the, uh, in like the ECOD training, there's no yelling. There's no um, leash popping. There's no physicality. All you're doing is pressing a button, right? So, um, disciplining a dog um in the human way um 
is very different than how dogs discipline each other, right? So I had a consultation yesterday where I was hearing this lady talk about the dog's life. And I just said, I said, um, it just sounds like there are no, like there's not, there aren't consequences for your dog's actions, like in his language. And then she said, we do timeouts, we do um, crate time and everything. And then I told her, but that's not how dogs communicate to each other, right? If we're at the dog park and Badger gets mounted by another dog, right? I bet he, I, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't like that, right? He's not going to put the dog in a timeout. He's not going to say off, leave it. No, 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 sit, right? It's just going to be a quick snap. He's going to snap at the dog, right? The dog's going to get bit and he's going to be like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else because that was not fun. I'm not going to mess with Badger anymore, right? That's how dogs communicate to each other. So, um, if Badger, let's say, entered like a play group with that energy that you're seeing in the elevator, sometimes dogs will see that energy and just correct it off the bat because you're not going to enter this area like that. You're going to be more, you're going to be calm and you're not going to be wild and cause all this chaos, right? Sometimes dogs will, 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 will correct that behavior themselves. So what's needs to, needs, what needs to happen here is we technically need to bite Badger to calm him down, to settle him. Right, we need to snap him out of the out of this this um, tantrum and um, uh, snap him out of the like the the overexcitement to get him to calm down. Right, so it'd be the same thing as like your prong collar, right? When you give him a leash pop to calm him, but now we just need a, a better tool where it can get through the brain and actually get through him and like actually like, snap him out of it and be like, oh, okay, mom's not playing today. I better relax. Right, um, so then as we do this, we shouldn't get to the point of yelling or um, him vocalizing because it's being addressed. So um, for me, you know, if, if, if you're worried about people being, um, um, I guess, judging because you have the e-collar on, on your dog, then, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more, what's the word? People are starting to use e-collar a lot more as, I, as I've seen through social media and everything like that. But, uh, you know, if someone ever has an issue, when I have my dogs on e-collar or whatever, I just say, you know, it's my dog, you know. I, I, it, they'll also might see like the before and after, right? So they might see before, like, cause I had a client one time, she was like, hey, I went to visit my mom's in Ohio, I think. And then my sister saw Sullivan and they said she was a completely different dog, right? So if someone is seeing the good results and they're seeing, okay, what did they do to fix it? Oh, e -car, and they're seeing the dog behave well, then it kind of changes their mindset. But usually I just, I just ignore them. You know, it is, it is more embarrassing. I think, um, obviously if the dog's freaking out and everything and then you're yelling, I can understand that. So this tool will definitely make those experiences easier because there is no yelling. You're just pushing a button to bite your dog, right? <laughs> I feel like it's very successful at using like the the button when like he knows he should not get into scuffles at the park. And in fact, when he does that, it's it's the times where he thinks like we might not have a control on us or something. He almost like looks at us. He's a scout, we call him a scoundrel sometimes because we're like, you're being a scoundrel because you know we're not watching you. But and so I think that so I feel pretty confident that when things like a scuffle over a ball or 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 he takes off after a bird or something, right? And I'm like, no, come back. You can't cross the street. And I press the button, he stops doing it. But when we're in the elevator and I've tried to press the button to say, no, you can't yell, it gets him more riled up. He gets more upset and he'll start barking at me, which he very rarely does. Um, it could also be that when he's on the e-collar and the leash, the e -collar can place a lot more. What do you mean this place? Like it should be on its neck, but oh. back, it doesn't have a strong effect. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. So um stuff. So for that is the e-collar sounds like it's good for obedience, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times regular dog owners have a hard time using e-collar for behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So um there's a few things that's that, that that's happening there is 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 um how did how let me see. There's a certain way we introduce ECOD to a dog here, right? The first thing, the first thing we want to do for Badger is teach him the heel command with our, our version of heel with the e collar. No, no, we're not using the leash really. I mean, the leash is on, but we're not using that prong collar, actively using the prong collar. So our version of heel is walk with me, stay with me, sit when I stop. 
So when I take five steps, Badger takes five steps. If I take 10, Badger takes 10. And then when I come that to- alone would be a great service. <laughs> when I come to a stop, Badger is to automatically sit with his shoulder parallel to your leg with a loose leash in any environment. I don't care what's going on, right? So first, we need to teach him um, our version. We're going to start from scratch um, of the e-collar because sometimes when we go straight into like, you're doing something bad and we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna zap you. Sometimes dogs don't know if this eventually goes away. So then they either get more frustrated or they're just not really familiar with this tool in this certain scenario, or maybe the e-call you have just isn't strong enough and it's actually more annoying for him, right? That's why I asked how many levels um, was on the e-collar. Um, if it was like, you know, like a 50, $90 type of e-collar, definitely wanna switch that out because it could, Again, increase the frustration, maybe. Um, but um, <clears throat> that's, that's, that's well, really we'll he's upset that he's like, I'm already upset, and now you're doing yeah. it, and I'm more upset. Right. Yes. So um, there is two ways to go about it. You can technically just go into the behavior and do it, but it's going to be a lot more difficult if we do like kind of we work our way there. So the, what, the, what the heel is doing, right? Because um, do you know the difference between obedience and behavior? No. So for humans, think of obedience as like math, science, English, social studies. That's obedience for humans. Behavior for humans is don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't, don't kill, right? That's behavior. So if I'm a serial killer, teaching me math skills will not connect. It won't help me stop killing people. Same thing for dogs, right? If the dog is overexcited, jumping, cheering leash, and we're saying sit, 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 right? Um, you're dealing with a behavior problem, right? That the overexcitement, and then we're using obedience to control the excitement, right? The reason why owners tend to use sit is because the dog won't move if they're in a sit, right? But the dog is still thinking, I wanna do it, I wanna do it, I wanna do it, right? Because all that's changing in that picture is that the dog is just, in a different position, that's all, right? So we're gonna teach the heel command, not for the obedience, but for the behavior, right? Because um, as, you, as you'll, you'll find in how we train the heel command, it's the discipline and the structure and the idea behind heel that should affect his behavior, right? It's the level of concern we're creating for Badger because again, he needs to keep that shoulder parallel to your leg at all times. So if our heel is concerning and the training is concerning and it means something to him, technically nothing else should matter when you're walking because he's more concerned about what's on his neck and keeping that shoulder on your leg. So um, this is also going to help with the, um, I guess if he ever, if, if you notice he gets a little overstimulated in certain areas, because when we do overstim, when we train dogs who have overstimulation, problems, which is very, very, very common and regular dog owners, uh, overstimulated dogs, um, it definitely calms them a lot down because Badger is wanting to do something and the tools we're using isn't concerning enough. So once we start to become concerning, he's going to be like, oh shit, I, I better watch or better second guess, right? Of what I'm doing. Um, this, this exercise can also calm dog, calm down dogs because it's very mentally draining. It's very tiring to keep that focus here on your walks at all times and to sit when you stop and move when you move, right? So um, as a result of this type of structured walk, <clears throat> you might notice Badger is just more calm in general because of the rules and how black and white we are with Badger when, we're, when he's on leash. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... <laughs> So we'll teach him heel. And then the idea is, let's see what it fixes, right? Maybe you're doing heel and he's like way more calmer in the elevators and then he's great. But maybe, hey, Enrique, when we go to the lake for our, like, you know, by Lake Michigan, he's still crazy. Okay, then we can tackle that on its own and teach you how to keep him calm in certain scenarios, right? Um, or maybe it's the other way around. Outside, he's great. Indoors, it's still a problem. He's still getting overexcited. Uh, but outside walks are great. He's, he's fine. He's perfect. Okay. We can do like an in-home session and I can teach you how to handle badger when you're going through the elevators, when he gets overexcited, when the elevators, um, 
going to open and all these things or when there's dogs walking around how to address badger and keep him under control so that he's not barking or um <clears throat> you know acting a fool or whatever um does that make sense yeah um so so um but, 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 but for e-collar the brand we use <clears throat> is called dogtra um, this is the brand Jesse, uh, the owner of the, of the business, has been using for more than half his career. He's tried other brands before, but this brand has gotten him um, the best results. The dogs, the dogs look really good on this, and they understand it very well. So um, this brand has 127 levels of stimulation. Oh, wow. Right? So sometimes, I'm not sure for your e-collar, there are other collars that go up to eight, but they are eight feels like our 127 we just have so many more numbers to be more specific to the dog's personality the breed um the situation we're in because on this the, the, the collars who have low or like just a few levels right that have big jumps between them is that you might notice that okay badger on level five is yelping it's too much but then you go down to four and he's not listening it's too low because then you're stuck there right so that's why we like dog trips because it gives you a wide range, right? To be on the exact number Badger um, should be on, right? Um, this brand has a mile long range. Uh, it's a very easy to use. It's your standard remote, Nick, continuous pager. Uh, we don't use a pager in our training uh, just because it provides, um, it either wears off. So like at first you might notice the dog's concerned about it. But over time, the dog will learn to ignore it. Or maybe sometimes dogs overreact with the pager because the vibration doesn't have like levels. It's just, it's just static. It's just, that's what it is. Um, it also provides you a delay because we've heard clients who go through other tra training programs is that they'll hit the beeper first, then vibrate, then the nick function. So if the dog is running away, right, and going to get hit by a car, are they, are you really going to hit the beeper first to see if they come back or the pager or the Nick, right? We train our clients to just react to the Nick function automatically because it's, it's make, it makes the dogs faster, right? Because there is no warning pager and, and, and beepers are technically warnings, but in our obedience, we don't want warnings. I just want to say that I just want to cue it. And then you just do the command. I don't want to have to warn you every single time because that's what's going to happen. It's going to be the beeper, beeper, beeper every single time because the dog isn't responding on the cue. Um, so that's why we use the Nick. It's just to kind of, kind of, um, what is it? Get through the dog right away. So there's no like, I hit the beeper and then he'll come back to me. But it's like, um, I don't want to have to hit the beeper. I want to say, just come and he comes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I guess, do you have a link to the specific Dogtra model? Because I looked online, it looks like there's a bunch of different models of Dogtra collars. Yeah. So um, we're going to be getting um, some black editions in stock, which is the one I'm going to have to recommend because I already know how strong Badger is. But um, <clears throat> we can. Because if, if the black editions aren't available, what you're going to want to be um, purchasing is called the 2300 NCP. The difference between the 2300 NCP and the 1900 S black edition is um, mostly um, like the power. The black edition is the strongest collar on their site. The 2300 is the closest one to that that I would want to use for a dog like Badger. Um, if you care about aesthetics, right? Cause the 2300 is more of like a box and the 1900 S black edition is kind of, if you see, if you see it, it kind of curves, kind of curls around the neck. Um, if you care about that, then you can go ahead and try to find a black edition. But again, they're, they're pretty much sold out. They're having issues with the, uh, what's the word? Like the, like the, the manufacturing, the shipping and all that stuff. There's like issues there. Uh, but later down the line, if you're like, I want to, I want to, you know, I want it to look good on Badger, that's totally up to you as well. Um, but yeah, there's some models that you'll see like 20 pounds and up or 30 pounds and, and lower. We don't go by the weight for their e-collars. We go by the breed, the behavior issue, and then 
if the weight if necessary because sometimes we can get a frenchie right you think the frenchie would get like the smaller collar but french bulldogs are bully are uh, they're a bully breed right they're tough dogs so we put the frenchies on the big boy big girl collars because we already know from our experience they're tough so um <clears throat> That's how we go by our e cause just behavior and like the breed and, and like what's what we're, what we're dealing with. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, what else? In the moment, I really like the, the way you laid out a potential plan for him um, focused on, on healing first. In the meantime, though, as he continues to exhibit the elevator stuff, which is happening a couple times a day and is getting worse this past week how do you suggest we um what i would do is for now what you can try doing is on your prong collar is to de-escalate a dog you always want to pull up right you don't even need to say anything if he's going to act a fool if he's going to chew the, the the leash if he's jumping pull up and away for him to de-escalate. Now, once that elevator opens, it's going to be harder because he's a very strong dog. So it would just be doing your best to keep him up and away and maybe wait for him to sit because it's not so much the sit I'm looking for, but it's the, when I pull up on a dog, in result, they sit. But this sit isn't obedience. This sit is more like they're calm. So what I would do for now is if you ever freaks out or anything, pull up and away. Don't say anything because when you add words or um, you feel, uh, or you add emotion to this, right? You're just um, kind of adding fuel to it. And then he's going to get more amped up. So I would just um, not say anything. And if he's going to act up, pulling up. And then basically what you're doing is you're giving him pressure. But when the pressure turns off is when he comes down. So if he's spinning around and everything, I'm keeping my arm up until he's like, okay. And then I relax because he's going to be the one doing it to himself. I'm not doing anything. He's the one freaking out. Right. So uh, what I would do is just giving that pressure on pressure off concept to him, having him understand that when you're not complying, this pressure is going to turn on. The only way to turn off is when you comply, which is settle down. So um, that's what I would do for now. Um, and, um, you know, um, when's the next time he comes to daycare? Is it Thursday? Sorry? I think Thursday. Thursday? Okay. Uh, I'll take a look at his prom car because I can't remember if it was, um, you know, uh, like what the brand was or like if it was a bigger. We've had the same prom collar since he was a puppy, so. Got it. Okay. Um, you can also try taking a few links out to make it more fitted uh, right behind the ears. So it's not going to fall or anything. Cause the higher you are on the neck, the more sensitive, um, you are, the more the dog is sensitive. So the higher you are, the, you might get through the brain more eventually. So, Cause if it's low, the dog is more tough here. So it's not going to be as effective. So you want to make sure you're really high up, which means you might have to take some links off so that it's not falling and it's just always here. It might feel tight, but it's gonna give you a lot more control for now um, until we get started with the program and everything like that. Okay, and in terms of the program, a couple of questions. When, what is the availability to start the program? And two, you mentioned a couple of different options with just the, the heel command first and then behavior as needed. What are the price points for those programs or the options for, for that? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> for from what I'm hearing and everything, I think any program you choose would be a good program because although we're dealing, you know, with the overexcitement and everything, it's technically more of like a general obedience, general behavior stuff. So if you did a board and train, that'd be great. If you did a day train, that'd be great. If you did it in person, that'd be great. Now, if, if Badger was like, um, let's say like, having like some sort of aggression to dogs now. Now he's like, you know, blowing up at every single dog and he's actually actively trying to attack them. Then it's like, okay, we should do an in-person. I read recommend it because, you know, you need to learn how to handle badger in these scenarios. So for all these programs we have, 
we always push for in-person because in in-person programs, you learn a lot more. Um, you're there from the start. It's all verbal instructions. So we don't touch the dog. We're only coaching you how to work with Badger. Because again, at the end of the day, you will be the ones walking Badger through the elevators and then around the block and everything like that, right? Us, we know what we're doing so we can make it happen quicker. Um, so I do recommend in person just so, because you get more experience. Um, Sorry? When you say in person, do you mean we should be there or do you mean that, what do you mean by in person? In person okay. is a uh, one on one where we, um, you guys will meet with the trainer and Badger and we're kind of actively teaching you um, the e collar and the, all the commands and such. Um, board and train is when you drop off Badger and we're basically training him here and we're getting the foundation and doing all the work for you in case, because sometimes owners have um, um, can't commit to seeing a trainer six times consistently. So like, I can't, I don't have that time. I'd rather do the board and train just because of how life is, <clears throat> which works as well. Or if you plan on going out of town soon and you want to take advantage of that time, get him trained at the same time, that's up to you. Um, but, um, for in-person programs, from what I'm hearing, we have the three week program, the six week program, the nine and the 12, mm -hmm. from what I'm hearing, if you're just, I just want the walk and, um, you know, cause obedience wise, cause your main concern is just leash walking. Is there anything else you want to teach Badger or work on with Badger? Like commands, like, you know. Um, I feel like we almost have been too traumatized by his walking to think about the other parts. Um, I guess in our part, like not necessarily on leash, but if he's in our apartment off leash and feel like he can't go with the person who wants exiting our apartment, he'll do the same thing. But it sounds like it's the same trigger of just him being overstimulated and wanting to go but can't go um the heel is a, a big thing that we want to get um able to do and eventually um, the heel off leash just to be able to, to walk with us off leash um what what are some common ones that you get that people ask you for that we might not be thinking of right now um so like um let's say all the all the commands we have is heel with the e-collar, this is all with e-collar. Right. Heel, stay, sit, down, come, and place. Place is go to your bed, sit down, stay, or stand, lay down, I don't care, chew in a bone, just don't hop off, no matter what. And then we have dogs stay there for hours, two, three hours, and they're not allowed to hop off, right? So what I'm, 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 what I'm trying to, here, I'll explain, I'll explain how the programs kind of look and what you'll be getting with each program. So the three-week program, is like bare bones, just the heel, just your leash stuff. That's all we're going to be accomplishing for that. And we're going to be spacing, we would space out those classes by a, an extra week, just so it gives you more time to practice. So we don't rush um, through the three classes, like the, um, uh, we don't rush through them. The six week program is if you want to learn the leash walking, um, maybe we can go over recall and maybe like one stationary command, which is very, which, which was like, would be like stay with the e-collar. E now our versions of our stationary commands are very strict, right? We can have a dog and a down and they're not to move for three, two hours. We can have a dog and a stay and they're not to move for an hour or two hours. It's very um, strict for the dogs with using e-collar with these other commands that Badger may know, right? The difference between using positive reinforcement for these for these commands and the e car is the again the discipline behind the command now right because usually when we get a dog and the owner says he knows sit and stay and down it's more of like a, like a trick to a dog it's just like a trick he knows right but when we add discipline and importance behind the command it's obedience it's like don't move for an hour until i say so right no matter what's going on in your environment that reminded me of um Maybe that's one that we should think about because so we were just at his family's house for Easter and um, his brother uh, has a girlfriend who brought her own dog and Badger got really frustrated because he was on leash inside the house. We were trying to, in an effort to try to get them to meet in a cordial way, we put him on the leash. Our mistake, we should have known that that was going to get him frustrated. And so he got really worked up. So it would be really helpful to have him either stay or like 
to have been able to tell him relax and actually trust that he would stay there. Bradner knows how to stay, you know, lay down and do all that now as a trick. But with, with that dog, he was like, he was all over her. He was very excited. He howled. He did the whole, the whole performance <laughs> that he's learned in the elevator. Yeah. Um, so a six week program would be your walk recall and one stationary command. Um, it's also going to give you um, the option to do like, like there's gonna be like more wiggle room with it because two classes would be on heel and then we see what it fixes. Like I said before, maybe the in-home is still an, an issue. Then we could do that third class in the home and then we can do uh, maybe like recall or like a station command, whatever you're wanting to learn um, that next class. And then you have two left and we can, you know, do more leash walking or more stuff with the dogs um, or just more commands. How and then, long is each session? Like, is, is it one class per week? Yes, it's one class per week and their classes only last an hour. And we okay. teach you one topic at a time, just so we're not overwhelming you with information. So um, the nine week program is more stationary control where we can go over the down and place and, this, and like the stay and the sit and have it being very sharp. We're also gonna be touching upon long leash work. So there's a few way or uh, there's phases to get to off leash. The first phase is the short leash phase, long leash phase is second, and then it's long leash dragging, and then no leash in an unenclosed area, or an enclosed area, and then no leash in an unenclosed area, right? So we have to kind of build your way to off leash. The long leash is gonna be like, almost like your proofing stage, because now Batch shouldn't have 30 feet to make mistakes. We want him to make mistakes so that we can teach him what we're asking of him. So with the Naimi program, We'll be touching more on the long leash commands and more stationary control. The twelve week program, um, that program is for more is is for owners who like go hiking every other weekend and need their dog to be completely off leash trained. Um, and just we just do basically more work and we're we're sharpening every single thing yeah. up to the point where he should be ready to be off leash trained soon. Um, so it depends on like how much control you're wanting to um, have over Badger you are more than welcome to purchase more classes. So you can purchase the three week, get the basics done. And then maybe you're like, wow, I didn't think, you know, he, he made this much progress this fast. I, I want to learn more. Then you can buy another three week program or a six or whatever it is that you're, you're interested in. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions about the in-person program? Yeah, but each cl additional class would be at the 225 rate instead of the progressive like three additional classes for 400 bucks between the three week, oh, 30 minute extension. So I'm just looking like if we did a three week and want to do like another add on, it'd be a 225 for one class. Or if we just did the six week, those three additional classes would only be like 400 bucks. So if you buy a three week program and you buy another three week program, it's still going to be whatever that price is. You don't get like the, the discount, the week discount. So if we bought two three week classes individually, it'd be twelve hundred because like six hundred for each three week class. I think so. So and if we did the six week, you'd only be a thousand. So we'd just be missing out on that um, volume discount for upfront. Correct. Yes. Um, so you can also like save your classes. So like maybe um, we, that's what we'll have some owners do. Is like that last class. We tell them just to save it, you know, when you need it, because we've already made progress. We've already done what we needed to do. Um, but for your six-week six program, <clears throat> again, your priority, we go based on, like, your priorities, right? Your priority is leash walking and having him go down the elevation and all that stuff. So it would probably be two classes heel and then one class in the home. And then we can focus on recall um, that next class and then do something else that fifth class. Does it make sense? I have Two questions. Okay. One is, um, sorry. One is, um, so we don't have a car. And so I remember at some point we looked into this and we were like, well, we can't do the Oz car for the in facility thing because we don't have a way to get there. And getting an Uber with him, with how big he is, is kind of non negotiable. So, do you guys? Have you, has that changed at all? Was that a COVID policy? Um, or oh, is yeah. an option to do at home? Yeah, we do. We can do in home. So like if you have like a park that's near you, that's like not like a decent walking distance, we can meet at the park and we can train there. So then basically, um, or we, you know, I've done outside the, 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 um, 
I've done, what did I do? Outside the, um, the apartment building. I've done outside the building before. Um, but we definitely do offer in-home. Just a heads up that it will be at an increased price just because now we're, we're traveling to you. Um, but that's definitely an option. Yeah, so if even if you did like Lincoln Park right across the street from us, it's still outside, it's still be the $50 upcharge per lesson because it's coming to us instead of like the set locations. Yeah, so um, I forget what the charge is and how the, I think, I don't think it's like additional every single class. I think it's just the program is just different. Like the program itself is just increased. I'm not sure. I forget how the prices work for the for the in home. I haven't done an in, in person or in home in person uh, client in a bit. Yeah, the website. Okay, that's just something that I wanted to clarify because I wasn't sure if the the transportation thing was just a a COVID thing or not. And the other question that I had was, um, if we do end up choosing to save the class, because uh, we're like we know four out of six worked with what we have. He's only two, so we expect that in the next. You know, years and years of other uh, young adult behaviors that we may want to correct. Um, how long until that expires? They you don't know, expire. They don't expire. Okay. No, I don't. I mean, I don't think so because it's like it's it's like you purchased the class. You know, like you you, you purchased it, so you have that. Guys, there's some dog services that have um, 90 day expiration uh, policies that we learned about after we paid. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, like, unless they. Um, yeah, unless they've changed it, I will have to double check, but I'm pretty sure they don't expire because we keep we keep a like, track on like, you know, who has an extra class and like whenever they email us like, hey, my dog bit a child, let's have a class and we'll have a class and we'll talk about it. Like we've, I don't, I'm pretty sure there are not, there's no expiration dates on those, but I'll okay. double check. And we'll let One you know. thing that I don't even know, I mean, we could probably try to YouTube this and try to figure this out, but he, he is not gentle, even at the vet today. The vet went to give him a treat and he like devoured her hand. Uh, so there's a way to like put that into the package. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, a lot of these things are all coming from like the jumping, the biting, just the way he, he is, is coming from him just being very overly excited. So once we start to tackle the overexcitement with the heel command and like the e-collar and using that and like the discipline, uh, we should start to see a few things change mm -hmm. uh, just in like everyday life that we don't need to tackle directly. So you might notice like if there's something, you know, when you come home, he gets super excited mm -hmm. and maybe we're going to the training and one day you come home and he's kind of like not too crazy, but he's still happy to see you. You mm -hmm. might just notice, okay, he's just more calm because every day, right? Everyone walks their dogs three to three to four times a day, morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, and then evening. So you have three times to practice this, this version of heal and three times to apply structure and discipline to Badger's life, right? Because it's like a child where, you know, if the parent is letting the child come home late, not do the homework, not go to school, that child is going to be a very, um, how do I say, um, the, the future of that child is going to be very difficult, right? Versus a child who is giving structure, who has to be home at a certain time, has to get good grades, has to go to school, and they're, they're living a strict life. They become a, a well more organized and disciplined person, an, a disciplined adult. Same thing for Badger. If we're practicing, right, discipline and structure, that's what Badger's going to become. If we're practicing a lot of freedom and do what you want and have fun, that's who Badger is. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So the heel exercise is a great opportunity and gives you a lot of, um, gives you that option to apply the appropriate amount of structure and discipline in his life. So that's that's why we like the heel because everyone walks dogs three to two times a day. I have one last question. Um, and I'll let Brett ask the question. I'm sorry. Um, is so is the the in person training offering once per week something that we figure out what day works best for us, or is there a day of the week, time of the day if that makes sense? And how does that interact with the, the daycare days that we have for him that are usually Monday and Thursday? Yeah, um, we work with your availability. So um, what's gonna happen after this consultation is that Tina is gonna send you, Tina's my personal assistant with the, the scheduling and everything like that. She handles the calendar. She's gonna send you a follow-up email that is gonna be, it's gonna have the programs we talked about with the prices. Um, it's gonna have the e-collar I recommend. 
and it's also going to have on oh, a on ginger and you signed the agreement so you're, you're already a step ahead so basically once you get your e-car uh, once you're set up with that you would just let tina know when you're ready to start so that we can begin the billing and booking process and you'll just let her know your availability and then we'll work with that um any other questions that's it on my end do you have anything yeah, i think that's that's pretty much it um and just one final point if we do go to like the regular oz park when you've got the ability to just do one session in home if you just want to upcharge for like the one of the six sessions you don't have to do all or nothing in home or at oz park um, oh, so if, if, you, if we train at Oz Park, we can do an in-home session to get like the building stuff covered. Yeah. Um, same thing for the facility. If you want to do the facility, we can do an in-home class so where, where I meet you at the apartment and everything like that. And we can go over a few things. We should almost do a facility class where we haven't transported in daycare. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, because our biggest thing is just like getting an Uber with him. Most like Uber drivers are like, what is this giant thing that you're and he's so excited he last time we tried he started licking the uber driver like we can't not. <laughs> yeah um yeah it's just it's just up to you um you know i i it won't really affect the training or anything like that it's kind of just like a personal preference for you guys but okay. we'll think about that and then i i'd also be interested in when you said her name was tina uh when she emails us uh to share more information on the um, the option, the, the boarding option, in part because I we do have some vacations that um, we should think about whether it makes sense to send him. So I don't know, like what that would be like one week intensive. So you would do like the equivalent of a three week program or a six week program in one week or exact, like more detail on that would be helpful. Yeah, so um, for the boarding trains, we have one week, two week, three week and a four week. Okay. From what I'm hearing, I think the two week board and train program would be the best. Um, one week, again, would be like the bare bones of just like, we're getting the foundation in, but mm -hmm. we're not gonna have that much time with them because you need to continue and do more of the work. Yeah. Um, if you do the board and train, you will get um, um, a video for each week he completes. Mm -hmm. So the first video you're gonna get um, is called the foundational, or like the introduction to the econ and everything like that where one of our trainers, Elias, will be teaching him heal, stay, sit, down, come, place in this video. So you're seeing the, how Badger reacts to the econ for the first time um, and how he, how he responds to it and how the progression works. The second week video is going to be us transferring those commands to the long leash phase so then you can build up to off leash control. You'll see that with the board and train programs, they come with what's called follow-up lessons. So I believe the two hour, two week board and training comes with four hours of follow-up lessons. So like when usually when um, owners pick up their dog on the last day or the day they need, you know, dogs done, we do a, well, like an hour to a half hour uh, follow-up up lesson there. So you have some sort of um, hands-on experience with the trainer before you take Badger home. And then we can do, you can, we can use those follow-up lessons to do an in-home as well um, to, for the, for you guys. Okay. Um, I'm leaning towards the, the in-person ones and if we can align them with the, the daycare days for transportation and stuff, I think that would be great. So we'll, we'll think about that. And, yeah. and, and Oz Park and really isn't that far. It's a mile from here. Oh, really? Yeah. It's the one oh. I'm linking. Oh. Yeah. I was thinking Oz Park was all the way up north. No. Oz Park is right in Lincoln Park off Lincoln, right? Yes. A nice walk for us. Okay. Okay, great. This is great. Thank you so much for... I feel much more, um, I've been stressed this whole week with Badger. He's been, you know, a yeah. lot. <laughs> and we were able to find the 19S collar on Chewy right now, so. the You want to make sure it's the black edition, though, because if yeah, it just the says. 19S dog training collar system black. Oh, so it's black? Okay. Um, how much do they have it for? Uh, right now, it's $239. Uh, it's, tw it's like $20 off the regular price. And it's on Chewy? Yeah. Let me see. And it says free one to three day shipping in stock right now. So. Oh, really? I want to see. You buy the last <laughs> one. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I won't buy it. Let me see. I just want to see. Make sure it's the right one before I go through and. 
All right, I have a 12 p.m. call, but thank you so much again. It was good to meet you. I'll finish this as well. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the picture. Uh, I don't think that, yeah, that's not it. So even though it says black, I'm looking at the picture of the remote. And um, if you look up, like if you go on doctor website and you type in the black edition, these look very different. And I think it just says black because that's just the color of it. Okay. But it would be editing. It would just be like in the title, Dodger 1900S Black Edition Dog Training Color System. And then it'd say oh, black. that's like the $300 one? Correct, yes. Um, like I said, we should be getting some in soon. I think Badger is a, the type of dog that would need it uh, just because he is, he is a lot more tougher. <clears throat> um, so I'll keep you updated on that. And then... Um, we could see from there. Um, any other questions? Nope, that's it. Yeah, I'll just look out to try and find the dog. I'll let you know if we end up purchasing it. Otherwise, if you can just let us know when you get them in stock, because I think I'm not going to try. You guys know more than we do. And if you think he's a candidate for the black edition one, that's definitely what. Yeah, I'll speak, I'll speak to Jesse and everything because. Um, we try to save them for like the dogs who have more of like a, like aggression issues because those are the dogs that really need it. But, yeah. if, but if, if we're going to be with Badger and we're going to be stuck at a certain point, cause maybe the 2300 isn't strong enough for him and we're stuck there, then it'll be like a bunch of wasted time. And then, you know, then we'll switch to last minute. And then it'll be, it'll be, um, yeah, just a waste of time. Um, but, um, no, yeah, we'll keep you updated on that. And then I'll, <clears throat> I'll let you know what we'll be doing and what we plan with the collars. Um, but other than that, any other questions? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it for us. Cool. Um, so again, just keep a lookout for that follow-up email and from Tina. And other than that, it was very nice uh, speaking with you guys. Um, and then if anything pops up, any other questions about the training or anything arises, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you when I can. Appreciate it. Right. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.